Hi everyone, Marriott Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. Today is going to be a mix match junkie Tuesday. I'm going to create a little book type thing that I saw on Lindsay over at Nevermore. Nevermore something. Now, now my mind is a blank, but I'm pretty sure you probably know who I mean. It was a video that she did about two years ago, and it was just a um, showcase. I'll put the link to it, and at about the 30 minute mark, she showed this little flip type book. But it's not a book. It's not a flip-flop book. She said it was popular a few years before that. But I could not find a video of this particular book because I'm sure it's called something else today. But every time I tried, all I kept getting was flip-flop books. This is not a flip-flop book. But that's what we're going to be doing because I'm still sorting and I want this little book, this, this little planner is not working, to hold all of my notes of things I made for the craft show that I don't want to lose. So what you'll need are some envelopes. And from what I could count in the video, it appeared that she used 12. Her cover was a card, an old card. Okay, you're going to hear walking. My husband's leaving. Um, an old card, and then a bunch of envelopes, and a base. And I'm pretty sure her base was probably half of a file folder. But I didn't need one that big, so I just created my own. And basically, the envelopes just opened in alternate fashion, and they're glued to the back. And they were staggered in size. So I thought it was cute. And I thought that's kind of, that's going to be useful because it mostly has pockets. So, I went to, you know, the Christmas card boxes, and I quickly spray dyed these last night. The Christmas card boxes, you know, when you would use a card for a craft or whatever, and then you end up with more envelopes than cards. That's what I did. And I could not, I think I found one envelope that's an actual letter size. I can't believe I don't have a box of letter size envelopes. Who doesn't have that in their house? So I found one that's an actual letter size. And everyone probably has junky envelopes sitting around. So, okay. Um, let me say some thank you to some people and some things. I don't have a um, product, but I will show you what I'm working on. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Marty, Sonia, and Darlene. And a special thank you to everyone who wished me well on my new boutique. I'm, I'm nervous about it. And I'll tell you why here in a little bit. But I'm just, um, I'm excited and nervous at the same time because it was a lot of fun. Because it's like I get to choose all the things. That's just one of the items, type of items that will be in there. But I get to choose all the things to make the journal I know I'll never make because I'm not going to live long enough to use everything in this, in my 
30 years of hoarding, okay? I already know that. <laughs> so, that's what, it was fun. It was like visiting a museum or, you know, a, a thrift store. So, it was a lot of fun, and thank you so much for your um, kind words and support and everything like that. Um, I did add, I knew I didn't find everything, and I finally found some specialty papers. So I added a couple sheets of that, and I added the fabric that was in the background. You couldn't see it, but it was it's upholstery. And it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. It's like a old green and bronze. So I added, since it's upholstery, it's pretty wide. The bolt is pretty wide. So I also put the measurements for the fabric in the listing. So I did all that. Okay, let me show you this real quick. I started Butterfly Journal, started making a few things for it, found this, I thought this would be nice with it. So that was, this was one of those weeks where you saw so many cool things that you didn't know what to do. Did you ever have one of those times? Well, I did. <laughs> so, this is on the fly. On the fly design. So what you'll need are your envelopes, some kind of base, and some kind of card. I lost my card already. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. It's on the back. And then I got out my styrofoam plates in case I want to pretty these envelopes up a little more. So that's what we're going to do. So, and I have some Etsy news. So it appeared to me that she started with the smallest envelopes, although they were staggered in size. And ended up with the largest. So my largest are going to be something like that. So I have six on one side and half a dozen on the other. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start gluing. And at first I was wondering how is that not ending up so bulky in the back, but Apparently, it, if you stagger them, maybe it won't. And then I'm going to um, cover the back with a piece of scrapbook paper so I can hide all that, what's glued on the back. So yes, this was one of those weeks. That one looks pretty good on its own, so... I'm just going to glue. I had one of those weeks where I saw so many things, I didn't know what to do. And I had some things on my list, but I don't know, I just ran out of time. Last night I sat down and I fell asleep, so I must have been tired. Then I woke up, well, we had a fire last night. I think that's our first fire since probably July. So I think I'm going to, you know, stagger a little and a little. And it seemed she alternated, so I'm going to go from one side to the other. And that envelope doesn't look too bad. And I'll do any, it had a minimum decorating, you know, it had some little collages on it and things like that. And mostly she went around this, probably to reinforce it. 
So, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. And I felt bad last week about the paperclip incident. I was trying to avoid having to go upstairs and upload between videos. So I thought about redoing that because I saw some more. Of course, I should have. I should have started back over here. I um. Of course. After I do paper clips, I saw 10 million paper clip videos. So I watched a bunch of those. And some of these people, you have to stop. You have to stop inspiring me. Now, I've watched Mrs. Cog before, but I saw some things she did with paper clips, it blew my mind. That's what I mean. You have to stop these these fabulous makers. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where I should have been with this one. Did you ever see reaction videos? Well, I didn't realize they were so popular, but apparently they are. I should do reaction videos to me, to some of these creators. I know that, um, I know that you're allowed to do that, but I probably wouldn't feel right doing it if, unless it was a Creative Commons license and they, they didn't mind you commenting on their videos. But there is this, um, there's this one guy called No Life Shack. His reaction to Leonard Skinner, hearing Leonard Skinner, Freebird, for the first time, that would need some help, this envelope. Hearing Leonard Skinner, Freebird, for the first time, which I kind of find hard to believe. But that's just me, maybe. Um, <clears throat> and it's priceless. I think it got 3 million views. So if you ever get a chance, hop on over and watch that because it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, but that's me watching watching some of these creators. My mouth is usually just, I'm in stunned silence or, so I guess I'm going to quick show you how you can use these plates to quick decorate here. I'm not going to cover the whole plate with your ink, not just a marker. And I just have some flower ones here because I was already using them on the butterfly. There you go. And you know what it looks like? It still looks like line of cut. I have to get another folder before I can do that one. I, I got a folder, but it wasn't really the one I wanted because I have a line of cut inspiration. So I had to look for a folder that resembles. Now that's kind of a mess, but I shouldn't have went over that part. Oh well. Wanted to use the ink. So, um, okay, this side, don't lose my place. 
Oh, this one, I should have went to here to do that. Let me get this dry. I'll do it again. You can tell I just quickly sprayed these instead of properly dyeing them. So yeah, we have I should be out there later today dyeing paper. I'm almost out. So that was me. That's me. When I'm watching some of these people. And I guess that's a good segue into being nervous about my shop. Because you know what makes me nervous? It's selling my own handmade things just like the craft show that made me nervous commercial art doesn't make me nervous but selling my paintings <laughs> selling things I make makes me nervous because I'm always worried like do I have the right glue? Is it going to fall apart? Is everything even enough? You know? And even worse than the paintings. You know? The paintings, even though I knew how to frame and all of that, most of the time I just took them to be professionally framed. <clears throat> Um, you know, I didn't have to worry about the, I didn't have to worry about any of that. But selling my crafts and selling things I make made me nervous. Well, that's going to get covered anyway, so I guess it doesn't, as long as it's secure in the front. I guess you can open that and close that either way, but she alternated. So, that makes me nervous. And the other thing that made me nervous is when I have the lights on in here, I can't. It washes out the color, especially green. For some reason, green is also the hardest to get to see accurately on the computer for some reason. So I always have to choose my, especially choose my greens out of a book. So what you see on the screen isn't what you're going to get. And it does the same thing in here. Even in my photos. I know they say, say take your photos in natural light, but there's not enough natural light down here to do that. And I like things to be bright when I'm crafting. And I, you know, I like you to be able to see everything clearly. So I don't like to turn off the lights, but at the same time I should when I want you to see accurate color. Then I would have to get back up and turn them back on. I suppose I should buy one of those professional circle lights. That might help, I don't know. So, we're almost done. This is going to need a press under a book because hers did not seem that bulky. And I know I counted the envelopes. I know I counted the envelopes. And I don't want anything that dark as walnut stained, so... 
I know she did 12. And her card. So let's move on to Etsy news. Okay, this is Etsy kills me. I had, first of all, I had a customer that had a problem, an error that I never saw before. So I reached out to Etsy and they explained, they answered two questions for me, but they never answered the third and instructed me to send her to Etsy support. Well, two days later, she still hadn't got her product. So I sent her a link from another source. And I know it had to be from Etsy backend because they said it worked and I knew it worked. And she was getting an error message, page not found. And I couldn't imagine. And she had her cover on this side, her card on this side. I couldn't imagine why that was happening. So, um, now why are you off? Oh, I see. You're keep, it's, it's going out a little bit. I wonder if I should have made sure everything was flush. That, I don't know, but I don't know how that's possible when you keep getting layers of envelopes. So, okay, I don't know why or how that's possible. Um, so, they never, they never helped her, but she got her product. So then, I got disillusioned. You know what I saw, and I know it's AI. I, well, I know they, I know they're there lurking. <clears throat> but I saw some kits selling <clears throat> at a loss. A hundred pages for 85 cents. That's a loss. If they think I can compete with a loss, they have another thought coming. And I knew it was AI. And some of these sites, I think, are actually fake. Even their reviews seem fake. Kind of like you're starting to see on Amazon. So, that was part one. So then Etsy sends me an email. Would I like to participate in a new beta testing pricing strategy, pricing optimization? So I clicked. And they showed a list of products and they said, your price is lower. Now why is that not? Let me get this straight. Why is your prices are lower than similar items? And I'm like, no kidding. That's kind of your fault, Etsy. <laughs> not mine. And um, I just thought, you know, Etsy, you know what would help? I wonder if you're writing to these people selling 100 pages at a loss instead of me, where my prices are. I pay attention to other similar sellers, and I 
BLI price accordingly. But um, yeah, I'm thinking, why are you, why aren't you writing to them? Or maybe they are. But you know what would help? Etsy is if you, when you see someone putting a price at a loss, you should put an error saying, oops. You've priced your product too low. We suggest you start with this price. So maybe that's what's behind this new price optimization. Because I'll tell you how Amazon is tackling the problem. They're not letting these people on anymore. And they're putting a limit on how many books you can create. Because they don't want 300 of the same coloring books. Or they don't want 300 of the same journals or 300 of the same product. So, okay, I'm going to decorate this as I go. Try to pretty it up as much as I can. Oh, I did have a pocket for the back here. And that's your little flip book. So, yeah. The travails of Etsy. I'm Etsy. Where's my notes here? Etsy has major problems. I think I'm going to just glue that. Should I glue that as an entire pocket? I think I'll just glue that as a flip and then put another little, well, no, I couldn't do that. Okay, I'm going to glue this down and then glue it as a pocket. Etsy. It's been the bane of my existence. As much as I appreciate all my customers and I appreciate the platform for opportunity I feel like it's it's gone downhill even since I started and I'm not the only one that says that people have been on there much longer than I say that and the problem is platform risk just like YouTube if I get a minute here, I'll tell you what YouTube is doing now. Platform risk, price wars, which is what I was just speaking of. You never know. You could get kicked off Etsy at any moment. That's why it's always wise to have another shop that you control. So the price wars... And what, what is happening with this AI? It's making everything a commodity. So I suppose it's your prerogative if you want a dragonfly in pink, purple, green, or blue, or whatever color you wish. But um, that just drives the price down for everybody. And that is not... That's not economically sound. If I had more time, I'd teach economics, but that's not economically sound. That just ends up creating more slaves. And scalability. It's almost impossible to um, scale your business on one platform. So that's what I have to say about that. Now, YouTube is accusing some people of invalid traffic and they're shutting off their payments. And these people are claiming that it's not invalid traffic, that it's, you know, when you a video finishes, it just automatically plays the next video. Now, I'm sure you're like me. If you have your videos 
playing in the craft room and you don't want to take the time to choose another specific one, you just let them play through. Or you, you've fallen asleep and you wake up two hours later and you've watched, in your dreams, you've watched ten more videos. That's not the Creator's fault. So you shouldn't be put penalizing the Creator. So that's what some people feel is why they are getting these invalid traffic and then having their payments frozen. So you can't keep up with the things they do. You just can't keep up. And that ends up being a problem when you want some sort of business stability. So that's my main point with that rant. But I am not competing with AI, Etsy. You have another thought coming if you think I'm competing with AI because I can't do 100 pages for 85 cents and I am not selling anything at a loss just to benefit you. I already... I and other businesses already subsidize your platform by using an external server, so that's subs that's a subsidy, I'd see, and that's a cost shifting, and it's kind of slim shady in my opinion. It well, it is slim shady because when Amazon got caught doing it, when Amazon got taken to court doing that, they changed their practice. Okay, everyone. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll narrow my focus and we'll go back to something prettier. But this is just, I don't know what it's called, but I'll put the link to Lindsay's channel and it's at about the 30 minute mark and you can check it out yourself. It's just gonna be a little workbook for me that will just go on my shelf. Okay, thanks everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.